Hello, it's Scott Manley here, looking at Kerbal Space Program 0.23 and the numerous updates which will now be available to everyone who wants to take a look at it. Uh, yeah, so Kerbal Space Program 0.23, uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the updates to the science system, which has been overhauled quite a bit since uh, its first iteration, largely because people like me were, you know, flying past every planet and getting 6,000 science on one mission after Tier 1. Um, yeah, I can't entirely claim responsibility, but there have been a number of changes to stop that kind of uh, retransmit spam. So uh, let's take a look at this probe. It's a very low-tech probe. It only has a couple of instruments. The main thing I'm going to look at, let's start with the goo canister here, right? Observe the mystery goo. It tells me we observe the mystery goo, and there's some changes here. First of all, it tells you the data size, and it tells you here, inoperable after transmitting. If you transmit this science, the canister will not let you reset it, so you get one go to do this. Um, although there is a re way to get around this, uh, and it's an intended way you get around this. <laughs> so yeah, once you transmit it, uh, it's no good, so you can't keep spamming this and get more and more science. You still only get 30% science if you transmit it. Um, however, there is a 40% cap, so even if you transmit this a couple of times, you're going to hit that 40% cap very quickly, even if you do reset it. Recovery is still 100%. You can see how much there is left to recover in this uh, grey area here, or this kind of less whatever. This kind of darker green area, that's what they call it. Let's uh, observe this materials bay and we get the usual blurb. Second thing to note, is it says material study from Minmus lowlands because now there are biomes on Minmus, which means there's a few more places to get science, which means it's a lot easier to, uh, if you're having trouble leaving Kerb in orbit, there's a few more places to get science from. Again, same deal here, uh, you know, it tells you the science you get, the science you get from transmitting, but uh, this is all. This too is inoperable after transmitting. This only these two experiments are inoperable after transmitting. Other other experiments let you reuse them as much as you like, but you still have to deal with the forty percent science cap. I'm just gonna observe this mystery goo, and there we'll keep that, and then we shall head ourselves into orbit and go and find the space station where. We shall return this data because this has no transmitter on board it. Anyway, we're almost back at the ranch, which was uh, actually not a trivial thing to do considering I hadn't unlocked RCS in this particular game. So this new module here, this is the Mobile Processing Lab, the MPLG2, and it actually has... Uh, it has some people inside it, I think. Yeah, crew has Bill and Bob Kerman. Uh, Jebediah is in the capsule up the front. Uh, sorry, up the front here. Bill and Bob are in the back doing their sciencey type thing. Now, you can right click on each experiment now and review the data, and you get this new icon here that says Process in Lab Module. It adds 15% transmit value. So, clicking on that, it d takes a. It runs through, you know, a little. Uh, processing time, which may be important if you're flying past a target very quickly. And it says you've now got more science from it. And of course, we can transmit that data. And it tells us we will render this module inoperable. Are we sure we want to continue? Yes, of course we do, because we want all the science we can get. Similarly, we can uh, do the same here, or we can right click on this and process lab data. And it'll tell us we observe the goo process lab. So this one will actually pop up all the experiments. Also, process and lab module. This one only gets us an extra 10%. And, of course, that will take its time. And you see this one takes a little longer. Now, you notice I will only get three science from this now because we're going to hit, basically, our 40% cap. I'm going to transmit that, nevertheless. Out goes that antenna while we're waiting for the... Um, for the experiment, for the other experiment to finish processing, 88%, 90, 
100%. And so now we get 37.5% from this. Let's transmit that and transmit that as well. And it warns us the experiment is now inoperable. But the other thing the science lab does is if I right click on it again, you can clean the experiments. And again, this takes a little bit of time, but if we watch our experiments, they will start to close up and get reviewed and restored, cleaned up and made like new so that we can send them back into the hostile depths of deep space to gather more science for us. The idea is you can take this mobile lab and orbit it around Joule and have it serve as your home away from home to collect more science and more data. Uh, then instead of carrying multiple copies of each experiment, I'm sure somebody will point out that the you don't actually gain that much because all these experiments together weigh, you know, not that much. They weigh about the same as the lab, but you know, honestly, it's a nice thing to have, and I'm sure the lab will see more use in the future. Uh, it doesn't automatically generate science on its own. It, it has to... Uh, it's not like the lab that you have in... Uh, KSP Interstellar, where it will generate science on its own. Let's just do this process. Transmit, transmit. You see, it's great. We can do all this. Anyway, that's science updates. The main thing being new regions, new biomes, the science and the science lab, and experiments which you can't reset. Uh, similarly, you can do a crew report. And this one doesn't have any improvement on it because you already get 100%. So let's go back and take a look at some of the other changes. Now back at the R&D lab, we have a few new things to check out. Well, first of all, um, well, let's, un let's research some stuff here. We've got some more bits and pieces we shall add to our repertoire. It's always good. Okay, yeah, we've, we've maxed everything out. Now, if you want to know where the new items are, this one is under space exploration. You have the mobile processing lab here. The, there is a, also a new item here, which you've probably heard of, the Rapier Engine, the Reactive Alternate Propellant Intelligent Engine for Rockets. That is under hypersonic flight, uh, next to the toroidal aerospec. Remember, if you uh, update from a, another game, you're probably going to have to go back into this and actually click on these areas to actually activate the items. Now, the really big change comes from the Science Archives page, which lets you actually see where you've got all your science from. And you can take a look at the planets in question. You can see that you got science while over the moon. You can see you got science while over Minmus. You can see Kerbin, how we've hit the water, the grasslands, the highlands, the shores, the ice caps, all this stuff. And you've got, of course, Werner von Kerman there saying he needs more science because he has an insatiable appetite for the science or something like that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is actually take a look at building one of the new, uh, building an aircraft using the new hardware. Actually, the first thing we should look at is the new part window. As we mouse over it, you see a nice little area. It gives you the, the mass, the drag, and all that. It gives you a nice little rotating object. And if you right click, you get to see all the extra details, the pitch torque, the yaw, the, all that information you've always wondered what it meant and still wonder, but now you can actually read it without going into the part files. I'm going to build an aircraft and my nose is getting a little itchy, but hopefully I won't sneeze because that would be really embarrassing on a microphone. Um, so I'm putting a couple of tanks in here. Now, I don't, I'm going to run this as an air breathing engine part of the time so I can actually remove the oxidizer from this tank so to reduce our launch mass. This is, of course, an aircraft, so we need to know where the wings go. Let's stick a delta wing on there. Roughly here uh, is probably good. We're going to need two of them, of course. Excellent. Uh, stick a flaps on the side. A tailplane. We only need one of those. Tailplane goes back there behind the center of mass. And we'll stick some winglets on the front to uh, give ourselves some lift uh, yeah, stick that about there. Okay, so that'll be a plane that should actually respond pretty well. Now, uh, what other tweakables can we do? Well, we haven't, we've got these wings, we can set them to disable yaw by disabling the control surfaces. And, of course, these tweakables, you get them by right-clicking the applied through the symmetry groups. Similarly, we're going to we're gonna turn off everything except yaw on these. And, of course, um, few other things we need to think about. 
Well, it works as an air breathing engine, so we're going to need some air breathing intakes. We'll stick a couple of those on there. Uh, I said, I said, we'll stick a couple of those on there. There we go. So we have a couple of air intakes clipping through everything there. I don't care. I'm not trying to make this thing look pretty. Um, the other thing we probably want is solar cells because this will not generate any electrical power on its own. That is a balancing decision. It's not necessarily realistic, but uh, I think it's a good idea that we try to balance this even in sandbox mode. Uh, it has slightly lower performance than either a, a jet, a regular turbojet, or a dedicated rocket engine. So it's not entirely unbalanced out of the box, although it's still pretty darn good. Another tweakable you can access um, is right-clicking on the gear bay. You can, you can make them start uh, deployed or collapsed, as the case may be. Uh, you can disable the brakes off the front one, and you can unlock steering. So uh, let's call this the the rapier. Sure, rapier. Save, launch, and let's see if this thing actually works. Now, I haven't assigned any action groups on this. It should just automatically perform the switch over from uh, jet engine to rocket engine. And we're going to fall down. There we go. You might recognize this debris and detritus as something which uh, I previously placed out there. Uh, also, now we're rolling slightly forward. You can see the steering does actually work now that I've assigned it. But we're going to go straight ahead for now. So throttle up the engine. Right click and see what happens. Air breathing mode. You see the thrust builds up very quickly. And we're going to wait until we're going fast enough before pulling back on the stick. Uh, there, look at that. That is us airborne. Air breathing mode and we're going to the skies. Speed picks up and uh, our thrust actually increases as well. Let's just go vertical, really. We're not going to... We're not really going to aim this to be a space plane. We're just going to go, uh, okay, we got to go at some angle so that we don't slow down too much because we need more speed. Okay, let's do double speed. Yes, that'll be better. Double speed will at least help us, um, it'll he at least help us get to altitude quickly enough. Now, of course, you can, uh, toggle the mode manually. Watch this, uh, actually, yeah, let's... Let's watch it from this angle so we can see the change in the particle effects. Different, not very cool. Okay, let's put it back to that. <laughs> it's it's doing just fine. Oh, you know what? It's probably because... Yeah, there we go. So this is coming from the new particle mode as well, which uh, is an internal thing that lets part builders run their own particle systems. Let's try toggling now. They are different colors. Very pretty. Uh, Air breathing thrust uh, is coming back. Not ideal, but we'll get up to altitude hopefully sooner rather than later. And you'll see that we have intake air coming in. At some point our intake air will drop fast enough and manual switching should actually kick in. Now there's a bunch of other changes that have happened behind the scenes. Um, they've modified the texture system so it should compress textures on load apparently. So that will help reduce the memory footprint and help keep things below the 32-bit limit. They've uh, optimized some other stuff in the PQS system. That's a planetary quad sphere um, system that's used for planets. Hopefully planet loading should be a lot faster. Um, there's some new uh, other changes, you know, to just make things faster in general, right? The, so the performance is slightly better. You may not actually notice it. Um, as I said, there's a couple of, quite a few science changes. The uh, There's new biomes on the planet Minmus. Here we are, we're, our intake air is starting to drop off. Our thrust is going up, but at some point our intake air should drop down enough that we will hit into, uh, we will hit into rocket mode. Come on, 11 kilometers up. Of course, this is the wrong way to fly this into space. You really should be flying this kind of sideways to pick up as much horizontal velocity as possible. And then, 
uh, once you get going, you know, once you're going fast sideways, that's when you want to switch the thing over. You want to get as much velocity as you can while running in air breathing mode because once you leave uh, air breathing mode, then your specific impulse drops dramatically. Right now we're still up above 1200, but as soon as we switch over, it'll drop down to about 360, I believe. And we're getting very close to that threshold. 0 0.04, 0 0.03. Come on, our thrust is dropping off. Point zero three, come on. No, point zero two. That's us. Come on, when's this gonna switch over? We're st ah, there we go. Flame out. Oh, manual switching mode. We should switch to automated. There we go. And that's the rocket engine. The rocket engine provides 175 kilonewtons. It's the same as the old uh, aerospike, but with lower specific impulse. And the reason for that was that originally it was built around uh, an aerospike model. Not the case anymore, but uh, that might that you might wonder why there was some discussion of that. Ah, anyway, you can see we're now burning fuel at a whole higher rate. That is rocket engines for you. So yeah, with this thing heading up into the sky, uh, this could very easily be uh, a space plane given how much uh, energy it has. You know, I could probably put this into a nice clean orbit even without the fancy, uh, without the simple trajectory that I used. Um, I did actually take a one tank version of this around Minmus and back, but uh, this one, if you take it on a proper trajectory, should be able to actually land on Minmus, just if you're wondering. This one is about to run out pretty soon, I would think. Uh, oh, actually, oxidizer is going to be the limiting factor here. If I flatten out the trajectory, we should get ourselves into a pretty good orbit. Let's see what we're looking at. Oh, there, we're up to 100, 227, and uh, I could probably put this into an orbit, and I didn't even try. There you go. That's how awesome the new Rapier engine is. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.